And to, uh, and to give you another side to the story of innocent Iraqi civilians being killed by U.S. servicemen, here's the question. Where is the American media coverage? After all, it's the first time a video like this has ever been released. So RT correspondent Christine Frazad joins us now for that story. Christine, take it away. And this video was released just yesterday at the National Press Club, and I was there. And I should mention at least that there were several media outlets there. So everyone sort of thought it was important, at least enough to check out. But throughout the day, when you're watching the placement of this story and the placement of this video, in terms of some other stories, uh, it, w it was pretty interesting just how they viewed this video's release. It's the first video of its kind ever released to the public. Given by an unknown source to WikiLeaks.org, it shows the view from two Apache helicopters and many times shows the pilots begging to engage or open fire on the people below. During part of this attack, a photojournalist for Reuters News Service, along with his driver, are believed to be carrying weapons even though they're actually carrying their cameras. They and 10 others are attacked and killed. Come on, fire! This video was covered in a black box by some mainstream media outlets and not shown at all by others. It looks like they were asking for permission to engage. That means to fire, but we don't actually see the uh, shots being fired. We do not, Wolf. Out of respect for the families of the two Iraqi employees of the Reuters news organization that were killed in this, we are not showing uh, after the video that you just saw here. They will tell you they're trying to protect the families. But what they're trying to do is protect their licenses from complaints to the FCC. But since the attack happened, the families of the men killed have been wanting the truth to come out. There's a bunch of bodies laying there. This is all about not offending the viewer and not giving the viewer more than they can handle. I wonder. If we saw the coverage that we saw from the Vietnam War today, would we sit for it? While most mainstream media outlets did cover this video in some way, it was pushed back in many cases behind a seemingly bigger story. Tiger Woods talking today about his one in which all eyes are on Tiger. Why do you think Tiger Woods' return to golf was a bigger story than this? Well, because Tiger Woods is all about money and is a national celebrity, you can still say the word Michael Jackson and three photographers will line up. So celebrities are here to stay. But what's to expect for more videos like this one? I just drove over a body. The media attention is going to shift to the fact that we're not covering these things. And somebody has films. And Cedric, Wiki WikiLeaks has confirmed that they do have their hands on other videos that they plan to release in the future. They say at least one of them was from an incident and possibly another cover-up by the Pentagon that took place in Afghanistan. What, so you weren't so crazy about the, the whole Tiger Woods story at all? Well, I mean, you know, I guess it's important right. to tell, but... Um, <laughs> right. Well, let's just leave it at that. Uh, the fact that this took place in 2007, this is old video we're talking about, and this is, in some ways, in some respect, this is kind of old news, but do you think that plays a factor in this at all? I think it does play a factor. I think that if this had happened yesterday, it would be a little different. But I think the most interesting part about it is it's really, really different from the way it was covered back in 2007. We saw uh, the Washington Post, the New York Times, showing that um, the Army said that everyone on the ground was armed, everyone was hostile. Everyone was insurgents. So that's something, too. But I think that they needed this time. They needed the time, first of all, to get the video given to them. Um, they needed to encrypt it. They needed to get a lot of confirmation that, in fact, this was an authentic video. And then they needed to provide analysis before they could release this. Christine, a lot of people don't, aren't, they are not really familiar with WikiLeaks. Tell us a little bit about WikiLeaks and tell us about the process. I guess it's a long, convoluted process for them to have to obtain this video and then finally air it and release it to the public. Right. Well, WikiLeaks.org is a website. It's been around just for a few years. And what happens usually is they get either documents or, in this case, video uh, given to them. Um, sometimes they're government related, sometimes religious stories um, given to them by someone on the inside, by whistleblowers who want the video out there, or want the documents out there. but. They don't want to be behind it. So WikiLeaks is very promising of um, different people's identities, different companies' identities, saying, you know, you give this to us, we're not going to reveal who you are. They put it on uh, their website, uh, and usually they think that they're doing it for public good. Uh, so that's what the website's all about. But again, they have a lot more that they say is coming ahead. Okay, Christy and I had another question, but we're going to have to wrap up at this point. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks sure. a lot. Good job.